This is part three of a three-part video series looking at the behavior of different compounds in aqueous solutions. This is a review of some of the ideas we've talked about and a further discussion of soluble versus insoluble ionic compounds. Soluble substances dissolve to a good extent in the specific solvent, and the solvent we've been talking about has been water. Insoluble substances do not dissolve to a good extent in a specific solvent, not more than 0.1 moles per liter. So it's important to recognize that insoluble substances are uh, could be very sparingly soluble. Um, they dissolve to very, very low concentrations. So when we talk about an insoluble salt, there are a very, very small amount of ions that could exist in solution with even with the insoluble salts. In water, a soluble substance is classified as either an electrolyte or a non-electrolyte. A substance whose aqueous solution conducts electricity is called an electrolyte, and a substance whose aqueous solution does not conduct electricity is called a non-electrolyte. You need to memorize those terms. In order for a solution to conduct electricity, it must contain ions. So the non-electrolytes dissolve without producing ions in water. Table sugar is a non-electrolyte. If we were able to look at the molecular level of an aqueous solution of table sugar, we would see the individual molecules intact and dispersed in the solution surrounded by water molecules. Electrolytes break, they disassociate, or another term that's sometimes used is ionize. Typically the term disassociate is associated with ionic compounds and the term ionize is associated with covalent compounds, but sometimes you'll see that they're used interchangeably and loosely. Electrolytes break into ions as they dissolve in water. A compound that breaks entirely into ions as it dissolves in water is called a strong electrolyte. A compound that breaks partially is a weak electrolyte. A good example of a weak electrolyte is a weak acid. This is a very important point. At the same molar concentration, a strong electrolyte is a much better conductor than a weak electrolyte. So it's important to be able to look at a compound and identify it as a strong electrolyte. It's a shorter list than uh, the weak electrolytes uh, or non-electrolytes. So the strong acids are all strong electrolytes and the strong bases. You need to memorize hydrochloric, nitric, sulfuric, hydrobromic, hydroiodic, chloric, and perchloric acid as your seven strong acids uh, ionize 100% in water. The strong bases, the group uh, 1A bases and some of the group 2A bases um, are your strong bases. You need to memorize those uh, soluble hydroxides that act as strong bases and strong electrolytes. Now the other uh, class of strong electrolytes are the soluble salts and that's a larger class of compounds. You can't memorize all of them but what you can do is um, remember some basic solubility rules for ionic compounds. These three rules you should commit to memory. The group 1A salts are soluble in water. Ammonium salts are soluble in water and nitrate salts are soluble in water. And you need to know what nitrate is, NO3- and the ammonium ion, NH4+. And the group 1A, you can consult the periodic table, which is always handy for you. Everything else, you should consult the solubility rules to be sure, because there are some exceptions. So this um, first rule, you've committed to memory. The second rule, you've partially committed to memory. You should also be aware that acetates are also soluble. Those are salts, um, uh, acetate salts, and acetate is CH3. COO minus. It's the anion of acetic acid. Okay. Um, all chlorides, bromides, and iodides are soluble except those of silver, lead, and mercury 1. All sulfates are soluble except those of silver, lead, mercury 1, barium, strontium, and calcium. So there are some exceptions to the sulfates and to the halogens. All carbonates, sulfites, and phosphates are insoluble except those of ammonium and the group 1A cations, which are always soluble. Um, all hydroxides are insoluble, except those of ammonium, barium, group 1A cations, and we should add calcium is um, pretty soluble hydroxide as well. Uh, and those, of course, are your strong bases. 
All sulfides are insoluble except those of ammonium, group 1A cations, and group 2A cations. Okay, so you need to remember what sulfides are, S2 minus. And all oxides are insoluble except those of calcium, barium, and the group 1A cations. These soluble ones actually react with water to form hydroxides and end up acting as bases in water as well.